I don't have any special powers. Oh, I have one, Johnny. I never give up. Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me here today as we get to talk about one of my favorite subjects, comic books. My name is Jose, I love comic books, I love talking about them, I love sharing them with you. Feel free to follow me on social media if you would like, links are in the description below. I've also posted a link to the story we're about to see on the DC fan site. Batman 227 from December of 1970. I have a trade paperback that includes this story. I was not able to find a nice, clean digital copy. However, it does look like somebody actually took an actual issue and loaded it. This is not, as you can see, a nice, bright digital. Um, this cover is by Neil Adams. He does not do the inside, but I do enjoy this story. This cover is freaking iconic and... I was like, you know what? I think the people would enjoy it. So, I don't have a clean version of this. This is exactly how the issue would look like. Just like I said, somebody scanned it. So, we're going to show it. So, this is written by Denny O'Neill or Dennis O'Neill um, during the beginning of his run on Batman. And so we are, um, I do have a Batman playlist where I'm serializing old 70s uh, Batman issues, starting with the Denny O'Neill issues, and I'm going to work my way up. We're going to do some Marshall Rogers, some, um, oh my goodness, um, different people, uh, Jim Apparel, that's what I was uh, thinking of, and even some um, Gene Colan. So, all right, here we go. In all this bleak, uh, cavernous countryside, there is but a single gleam of light, a yellow luminescence glowing in a crumbling tower. By the way, this 70s type of writing is sort of what cr uh, the precursor to the Chris Claremontish type of writing. So, and therein stands a lovely girl, troubled, terrified. While without an eerie figure glides over the tangled grounds as silent as a shadow on snow. That is awesome writing. I love it. No noise, no mortal sound breaks the shrouded stillness, save the scrapping together of skeletal limbs in the tops of ancient trees and a distant agonized howl that may be an animal pleading for the moon or may not. Follow the Batman as he plunges into the morass of evil where lurks the demon of Gotho's mansion. And here we see Denny O'Neill is the writer with uh, Irv Novik and Dick Giordano doing the art here. And because this is a uh, actual uh, scan of the original, we get the uh, all the stuff here that normally is not on the digital versions that we see. So we see Batman uh, standing outside looking at this, uh, oops, sorry, looking at this house here. So it would have been nice if he was perched up in this tree. That would have made it even cooler. So it began just two days ago with the arrival of a letter. So it looks like it's from his niece. So and so, dear uncle, while my employer seems gentlemanly, I can't help feeling that something strange is happening here. The house is remote and isolated, and the children I have been hired to tutor seem to put it mildly very odd indeed. I hope you're well. Give my regards to Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson, your loving niece, Daphne. So that's not uh, Bruce Wayne's niece, so my bad. And so that's Alfred's... Um, niece here interesting male alfred says uh bruce wayne here interesting and bizarre master bruce it's a note from my niece daphne perhaps you remember her the actress and so that would have been in a uh, batman 216 so we have not we never covered that so all right so we continue here she has been er, at liberty these past few months. She accepted a position as teacher from Mr. Clifton Heathrow. But here, sir, read it yourself. And uh, Bruce Wayne goes, hmm, 
the deal does seem unusual. I suppose there's no cause to worry still. You st uh, still, you'd like the Batman to check. And I agree. So, nothing more strange than the Batman. You know, one of the neat things about um, Denny O'Neill is that he started taking Batman out of Gotham. He started kind of putting him in other portions, kind of. But Batman, he makes it work. So, I, I will tell you this. He makes it work, but he puts Batman in just the odd places. Countrysides. And um, if you've seen some of the videos in the mountains and just um, places where he would stick out like a sore thumb. So anyway, so we continue. Thus it is the Cape Crusader stands on a barren estate in the mountains, a hundred miles from the nearest town. And Batman goes, those fellows appear to be guards. I could evade them easily, but I'm curious. Why would anyone post watchmen here? I'll test their hostility by showing myself. Good evening, gentlemen. Bit nippy for this time of year, isn't it? I mean, God, he just shows up at Bat as Batman. What the? <laughs> that is awesome. Ah, I love. This is early 70s, so there's still some silliness from the 60s. So, um, that guy goes, ah, oh, who's that? Tis a giant bat, says that other one. Nonsense. Uh, nonsense you talking for him. Tis no more than a man. Strike a flame. He, he will have a look at him. Feel free. Mind telling me the name of this place? And the other guy says, Gotho's Mansion, and we've no liking for strangers. Well, now that you've seen me, I'll be strolling on. And the other guy goes, but not far. And he, you, you see here, he's gonna um, hit him with an axe, but the Batman catches and ducks down. When they said they didn't like strangers, they weren't kidding. Fortunately, I was prepared for a sneak attack. And uh, you can see Batman um, hits that guy or pushes that guy toward the tree. And so here we got this guy. And nothing explained to us. We're, as readers, uh, Denny O'Neill does allow us to um, uh, just does, uh, Chris Claremont would have put in 50 billion panels explaining things, but it, it's really nice. So you see Batman here dispatching the, the guys here and off he continues here. <laughs> this is beautiful. Um, and so swiftly, noiselessly, the Batman crosses the grounds and someone's coming. I may learn, uh, f more unseen here. So here he is on top of the tree. When we position the altar, we will be in readiness, Eb Elder Heathrow. Excellent, excellent. Be merry, f uh, fellows of the Coven of Gotho's Mansion. That is uh, the Calvis, the Coven of Gotho's Mansion. Tonight, for the first time in two centuries, we raise the spirit of the demon Balk. And so, the trio continues through the underbrush, leaving only a faint smell of musk in the chill night air and batman says daphne has uh stumbled into trouble the worst kind a coven is a group dedicated to black magic and i recall that balk is one of the nastiest creatures in mythology elder heathrow is apparently a chief warlock and obviously mad which doesn't make him any less dangerous here so you can see batman jumping off the tree there's only one window lit in the house and so we got these nice uh, vertical panels here. So that's where I begin looking for Daphne. So you can see here, we're going to look at this vertical panel. He throws his uh, rope all the way there and Batman's going to go up. Almost as though he were weightless, the Batman rises up the smooth to uh, stone tower. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, gosh. You know, I'm glad I didn't find a digital version of this because this just looks beautiful like this. So, And so here we have Daphne. Please, please, Mr. Heathrow, let me out as she bangs on the door. You have no cause for fear, Miss Pennyworth, Batman says. Um, and she's like, the Batman, I've come to take you away from here, Daphne. Thank Kevin, it's been horrid. They made me wear these awful old clothes. They kept me locked up. And the children I was hired to teach, I discovered they're not really kids. They're a pair of hideous dwarves. So, I'm supposed to spend my time looking at these old paintings. 
That woman, she she looks like and is dressed like you. I wonder how. We'll figure it out later after I get you to safety. They may have spotted my old my uh, my rope. So this old rusty, this uh, this lock is old rusty. Shouldn't be too difficult to break. How would they find his rope? <laughs> okay. All right. First, I'll go there. Oh, sorry. There, I'll go first. Stay a few feet behind me, just in case, Batman says. And so he's whispering here. Nobody seems to be in the house. They're probably all getting ready for the festivities. But there's a trap door, apparently. And so suddenly the ancient floor gives way. And before the Batman can react, he is plummeting downward. Ah, the Batman. My sentries warn me you were about. Kindly do not struggle. My pistols are aged, but in excellent condition, says uh, Heathrow. Y you shall die exquisitely. And uh, Timos, Sinbi, prepare our visitors for his fate. Bind his hands. I, Elder, tis done, she says, or they say. Then, and so you can see they got Batman on uh, a rope here for hanging. Um... Man, they're not kidding when they said the uh, comics code had to relax in the 70s. I shall explain this device was originally built by my great-great-grandfather to punish disobedient servants. The block upon which you stand is fixed to uh, weights under the floor. Cleverly uh, contrived to drop slowly into the cellar. In a quarter of an hour or so, the noose around your neck will bear your full weight hanging you, of course. While you're at it, explain more. What do you want with Miss Pennyworth? Asked Batman. Ah, so we go here. For years, I searched for a maiden born precisely at midnight on October 31st. A minute either way would not have su uh, sufficed. For if such uh, for if such a one is sacrificed, this night the spirit balk will arise once more. Six generations, my family has lived to do his deed. And Miss Pennyworth fulfills your conditions, Batman asks. Um, you realize you're mad. Uh, and uh, Heathrow says, Not at all. My ancestor actually succeeded in liberating the demon. The ghost of the maiden then slain still walks these very halls. Now, farewell, he says. And so you can see it's uh, starting to... Um, already hard to breathe. Won't last 15 minutes. Toes barely touching the platform. But there is a chance. He's slim. Ah, uh, that torch. If I can tense my neck muscles, keep me from strangling. So, start swinging myself forward. Now backwards. Gather enough momentum to reach it. Made it. Now, to twist around. I couldn't do that. <laughs> I, this part here would have gotten me. I got a big belly in the way. And so he burns the rope down. Gotta get my hands loose. And so he drops that. Burns like the devil, but better, but better burns than death. So, need a moment to catch my breath. And so, this person's face is covered. So, we, of course, can assume that it's not who we think it is. So, you must not uh, tarry. The rites of Bach have begun. Daphne, you escaped. I am not Daphne Pennyworth, but I will lead you to her. So, it's the ghost of that lady. Um, the coven holds its unspeakable ceremonies in the old chapel this way. Hurry. Her voice so oddly hollow like an echo. And her touch light as a whisper but firm. The near hanging must have done things to my mind. Because I don't even know her name. And yet I'm filled with an overwhelming feeling of love. So. So she says. There lies the chapel. The coven prances within. I can take you no further. Yours is a holy mission, for the elder is a pit of evil. Go. And so, wait for me, please. I wait. That is my curse. Precious seconds tick away. Be about your task. And so, here it says, Inside the coven begins a dance of darkest magic and defiles the earth with its chants. Mighty demon, heed us thy supplicants. Be still, faithful ones. For six generations, the Heathrows have preserved this spot as it was when last Balk visited. No trace of the unbelieving world will ha have we permitted inside these boundaries. Patiently from 
uh, distant places I have gathered, you who worship as I do. Our long vigil ends. The moment of fulfillment is at hand. So poor Daphne is about to get it. Here's Balk. Unto you I give this maiden that once more you may stand against us. And so she's got her eyes just like, oh, very frightened. Um, whoever this illustrator guy is, that Irving, um, he's not too bad. So there comes a cold gust of wind. A fetid odor of decay sweeps over the congregation. The torch dims to a faint glow. And for a chill instant, blackness claims all. A wavering figure seems to swell from the dark, and the odor becomes a choking stench. Then the flames spurt the f to full brightness again. The ceremony is over, Elder. Your bulk will remain in whatever hell spawned him. No, the demon must be served, says Heathrow. Love the greens being used here. Put that pitchfork down, and he takes it away. Servants of Balk, aid me. And so here comes everyone. Batman uh, lifts him up here and tosses him at them. Demoralized, fearing for their lives, the coven fragments and flees. Don't leave me. I am alone, deserted by all. And you, Balk, have also deserted me. Then I die. So looks like uh, Heathrow's about to have it. His heart couldn't take it, I guess. Poor twisted soul, says Batman. You'll be all right, Daphne. The danger is past forever. Go to the mansion. I'll join you there as soon as I see someone. So, his blood pounding, the Batman runs out of the chapel, his eyes straining until he sees the woman he seeks. A pure joy catches his voice as he calls her. Come, come to me. I cannot, though I wish it with all my heart I could. In besting the coven, you have freed me. Fare thee well, Batman. Wait, my love. So, uh, Batman here... Frantically following the plunges into the forest and stops, numbed as his gaze fastens to an image fixed to a tree, simmering in the light of the moon that has just risen. And the night is quiet. So it's whoever there that looked like Daphne and just Batman all sad because he fell in love. Must be an enchantment of some kind. So I just thought this was a really cool, neat story. So untypical of modern day Batman stories so I figured I would share it so Batman 227 from December of 1970 there is a second part but the second part is a Robin story so we're not we're gonna skip that like and subscribe and I do thank you for listening goodbye